Hello and welcome to Walthus Note. As the recession continues to hit Spain, thousands of Spaniards have already lost their jobs and many could follow. With unemployment at 25%, a record in modern times, what hopes are there for Spain's labour market? Discussing this with me today is Professor Luis Garicano, Professor of Economics and Strategy at the London School of Economics. Good morning, Luis. <laughs> Good morning. Let's have a look at the first chart which you've taken uh, with you today. Um, this shows employment destruction in Spain uh, during the three great crises of the post-World War II era, 1976, 1991 and 2007. So these three lines refer to Spain and compares it with the Great Depression in the US. What do we see here, uh, Luis? What we see, I think, is a, is, a, is a very large drop destruction, very out of proportion with the GDP growth. The GDP drop in Spain is not larger than in other European countries like England, but much, much larger uh, job destruction. And levels of job destruction that are uh, reaching Great Depression levels that are continuing and very long lasting. I think that's the thing that in the Great Depression by now, employment would be already recovering. Uh, in Spain, we still have probably four or five quarters at least of this further employment drops. So it, it looks like it's longer than what happened in the US yes. uh, in the 1930s. Now, exactly. how do we explain this? What's, what's driving this? I think there are a couple of things. One, there is clearly a structural problem with the Spanish labor market. The fact that Spain destroys, the, the GDP drops are always smaller than employment drops. Spain destroys many more jobs. It doesn't adjust in wages like in the UK. It doesn't adjust in hours like in Germany. Three times in those great crises, we've had 20% level of unemployment. No other country has this kind of pattern. So there's a structural problem with a duality, with the temporary jobs. Basically, you shed all this temporary labor whenever there's a problem instead of trying to, to, to find other adjustment mechanisms. And the second, of course, is a massive construction bubble where there's a lot of investments that have been made that are complementary to construction, that are only good for the construction industry. So these people found jobs during the construction boom, but now it's very hard for them Yes. To, uh, they, were, they, they lost their jobs uh, afterwards when the, when the bubble burst. Exactly. And it's very hard for them to find a new job. And uh, we can have a look at the second chart, and this will explain why. Now, this char chart shows um, the proportion of young people in Spain, but also Italy, Portugal, and an average of uh, 12 countries from the European Union who don't have a high school diploma. Um, so what, what we see here is that actually while this um, this these lines have been following continuously from 1992 to 2011 for all other countries. In the Spanish case, during the boom, actually the, the, the number of dropouts didn't fall. Exactly. I mean, this is, I think you can easily imagine that Spain without the big boom would have looked like Italy because it was looking, the trend is the same as in Italy and it's the same as the Euro 12, a very positive trend of people getting more education. We're in a world that requires young people to be more educated. Uh, in, 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 in all industry, manufacturing, etc., you need at least high school, you need some further degrees. What happens is um, wage inequality dropped massively during the boom. The, the premium to being educated was basically disappeared. So it, it made more sense to go and more work in a building stop, site. Stop working in a building site and a very good living and drop out of school. And now what, what you have, so what you have is this moment where you see wages in construction relative to other jobs increasing a lot, up to 40th percentile of, of the wage distribution. And you have a lot of people who basically stopped, I mean, the, the progress in that dimension stopped. And now you have all these people when the crisis starts that are really not going to be easy so, to employ. So what should the government do about it? How I think that uh, the government uh, in the last uh, months, in the last year, and also the previous government has been too focused on really short-term responses to the crisis. They've been very worried about the budgetary situation, making cuts. They've been very worried by the banks, which is a crisis, and they're now at least responding, at last responding. But they haven't worried enough about the structural problems in Spanish economy. And uh, it, that has to do with education. I mean, uh, these people have to be trained. It has to do with active labor market policies, which in Spain essentially do not exist. They were bad to start with. Now there's not even money. The, the training policies were dominated by the unions and employers. It was basically a bundoggle to finance them. So there really has to be done something very and liberalizing specific. services. Spain has many more jobs and services relative to the, pop to the population than any other country in our environment. And the service sector needs, uh, needs very strong reforms. Thank you very much, Luis, for being with us today. It's been a tough few years for Spain, but it looks like the government still has a lot of work to do.